Hello, this is Adam and thank you for watching Sabina Reefing. In this episode, we're gonna go over the gear that I bought for this 300 gallon reef tank and the decisions I made in the design and what my goals were. If you're looking for the livestock, that's in part one, which is in the link up above. This is a clip of the upper area of the reef tank above the fish tank. That's a PVC and I've used Panduit behind to hide all the cords. So even though we have a lot of equipment up there, it stays relatively fair, relatively well organized. On the hood, we have a few different pieces of equipment. Uh, for the cooling system on this fish tank, I used two 24 volt fans with fuses, as you can see, to actually plug into the 24 volt supplies outputs on the uh, Energy VR 832. And that's been a really effective way to actually cool the entire fish tank. They just have two bolts that holds them in place. They don't slide around. It's very effective at cooling the tank. I can usually bring the tank down about three degrees in about three hours. So about one degree per hour. Um, also up on the hood, we have two different types of lights. You can see the radions in the back with the castles in the front. The goal behind the setup for this hood was to have kind of the T5 look. Um, and I used the radions with light diffusers to try and achieve that. It did a pretty good job of diffusing the light. I did not want to have to be getting in there all the time with bulbs, so we did not go with T5s. And the castles had a nice shimmer. This is actually the Tuna Suns, not the Tuna Blues, which adds a real crisp white kind of daylight. And then the radions I keep a little bit cool or a little bit colder or bluer at about 14K. I guess that's hotter. And then um, you can see the Energy Bar 832. I plugged every individual light into the Energy Bar 832. It's nice because then it gives me alarms if one of the lights go out, which I'm not too concerned about ever happening, but I do like the power monitoring and it, I needed to have something up there. And I still use the outputs for other things. For flow inside the tank, uh, I went with two different brands. Uh, this is a Tunzi that I've had for quite a long time. It's a 6095. I do not use a controller. I do, however, have a uh, 24 volt to backup. So it's actually running a DC battery backup, 12 volt DC battery backup. And that's through the uh, 6105-5. It's been really effective at protecting the tank against any power outages, anything like that. Then you can also see that I'm using the uh, Waves by Neptune. I like these pumps. They have a couple drawbacks that make me I might switch over to the Ecotech Marine MP60s. Um, one, I love the fact they turn off when the water drops and they protect themselves from running dry. Two, they are a little bit noisier than even the Tunzi pumps. They move a lot of water though. Um, bang for the buck, I think these are a simple decision, but quiet is always very important and difficulty to clean. They're not the easiest to clean, I've coiled up the extra wire under the hood so that I may be able to pull them out and get a ladder and set them in a bucket without having to disconnect them and climb up onto the uh, hood and then unplug them and then pull them down, uh, which would be quite an undertaking. So I'm hoping I can just pull them out of the tank, set them on a ladder in a bucket of uh, vinegar and be able to clean them that way. So that's some of the drawbacks. The MP40s and MP60s are much easier just pull the wet side but I don't like having the cord on the outside of the tank I know some people worried about the cord on the inside of the tank and there's four inches of cord on the inside of the tank and there'd be 24 inches of cord on the outside of the tank so I'll live with the four inches of cord that just goes right out of the tank uh, I've used a couple of these pin inductors they're not an, actually a random flow generator it's basically an inductor that they offset it so that it actually basically goes into a turbulent flow and delaminates from the edge of the surface so it's creating a random flow and it keeps changing where it's going. Uh, they work pretty good. Um, the amount of flow that I send through my return compared to the amount of flow coming out of the waves means these are inconsequential. Um, didn't know that when I was doing it. For the lighting control I am using uh, the WXM module which I highly recommend. Um, I wasn't sure if I even wanted to keep the radians when I was first working with them 
because I Ecoprotect Marine was having some serious issues with their website and it crashed on me a dozen times. This is four years ago, five years ago. Um, and I was very frustrated with the WXM module. Uh, I've had no problems. You do have to have the firmware for the WXM module. Um, the Neptune guys were nice enough to help me out with that and uh, log in and fix that. Um, now moving down below, we have, uh, I've used Panduit again to hide all the cords. Keeps it nice and organized and gives it a nice look and it makes it easier for rewiring things later. The worst thing you can do is a bunch of zip ties and then a board that you can't get to and you hit everything back behind it and then there's a mess back behind it. There's no mess here, it's just all in the Panduit and clean and simple. Um, Panduit's fairly inexpensive. You can go to your local electrical supply store, pick that up. You can see I've gone with the Neptune Apex. Uh, I don't think there's even a second choice I have for any type of controller. Um, I've gone with the Tunzi 5017 for the water level controller. This is the normal Tunzi oscillator that everybody uses. It's reliable. I've seen some differences in the program. I've used the Smart Level, which is also another $200 ATO with a uh, solenoid valve. The Tunzi never fails on, but I have seen it fail off um, when the sensor gets dirty, so you do need to clean it every so often. Um, it does not allow enough adjustment for the time for me for what I'm doing here, so I actually have to cycle it at least once a day in case it alarms off. So it runs 23 hours a day, or excuse me, two, yeah, 23 hours a day, two 11 and a half hour sessions, um, because I have to reset it. Sometimes if I'm working in the tank and I get the water level off, it'll time out and then it doesn't turn back on. So I need to reset it about once a day, which isn't really that big of a deal because even if it turns on, and stays on for a little while, it's not gonna flood my tank. Um, having said that, I do use a manual float valve backup um, this is absolutely a requirement in my opinion if you're going to take and hook your fish tank up to a source of fresh water that's limitless. Um, I understand you don't have that kind of protection on your refrigerator, um, but when we amateurs are setting up things, it's nice to have a couple sets of redundancy. Also, when my refrigerator leaks, my wife doesn't divorce me because I've ruined her floors. Um, as you can tell, I've put tile down on the floor here. You probably see it in the reflection. Um, but you don't want to get hundreds of gallons of water on your floors. That's not going to be good for your life. One interesting thing about the Tunzi for is their solenoid valve. You can see it's got a brass block there. That made me nervous at first because I know brass, or excuse me, bronze, has copper in it. Um, see no ill effects. Uh, all of my SPS are coloring up. All my fish are happy. Um, I had a nick outbreak, so it obviously wasn't doing enough copper to do that. So it doesn't seem to be an issue, but it did make me nervous at first. So one thing to keep in mind, the Smart ATO doesn't have that brass block for the solenoid valve, but I warn you on the Smart ATO that that little plastic solenoid valve they have, I've actually had it get stuck in the open position. So it was actually continuing filling my water, my fish tank until it got up to that secondary manual float valve. Um, the manual float valve did exactly what it was supposed to do and didn't flood the tank. And I just had to wait a few days before the water evaporated. Um, you can see up here, we've also got uh, the Core 15 return pump and a CJ uh, Synchro Silent. I went with two return pumps and I went with two completely different styles of return pump. The goal behind the return pump is to always be pumping water through, so you always have your filtration and your heat, because your heats are usually your heaters are usually located in your sump. So if you don't pump water through there, your fish tank can get cold. Um, I went with two completely different styles. The uh, Core 15 was there because I wanted controllability in order to figure out how much flow to send through the UV sterilizer, which I'll show you in a second. And I also wanted something that I could set up my overflows to exactly how much I want. And then CJ Sinclair Silent is not hooked up to the Neptune Apex. It's hooked up to the 110 volt, which I do have a nice power bar so I can just hit one button and power the whole sump down. But it's on 
all the time. I don't want that to accidentally turn off. I don't want to lose just my Neptune Apex and have a single point failure that takes down my entire tank. That pump is on and running, keeping my filtration up and my heat at all times. Uh, for calcium and alkalinity, I've got two pumps. These are just the basic BRS dosing pumps. They've been workhorses. Um, hard to justify replacing them when there's never been a problem. I did buy new hoses, um, which I'm gonna put in there probably this weekend. And then I pumped all the fluid. Since these are positive displacement pumps, they actually, it goes up the wall about 10 feet, goes over about 75 feet, down about another 10 feet, and clear into my garage. You can see I have two five gallon buckets there. Um, that way I have enough alkalinity and I'm not filling that up every two weeks. And this tank is fairly young, but still it's already using uh, quite a bit of alkalinity. Uh, bucket starts off at 50 pounds. You can see I have scales under them. Um, that's full of water and the alk in the bucket and everything. And I reset the scale so an empty bucket will weigh zero. And I'm already down to about 20 pounds, 25 pounds. So it's already pumped through half of a five gallon bucket in a few months. So if you're running a big 300 gallon fish tank and I can only see that getting worse. So we may end up moving to a calcium reactor based on how much calcium and alkalinity I'm using. The um, probes, put a nice little probe holder in here. Um, the sump is made by Advanced Acrylics, John over there. And he says those little add-on probe holders, you can get those from him. The Refugium is powered by the Kessel H360. This light is extremely strong. I've had great luck with it. And when I did actually kill it because the fan died, um, I called them to order a fan and they said, well, let me check and see if it's under warranty. It was under warranty <laughs> and they even let me upgrade to the new Kessel A360X, which I had to pay a small difference for. Um, and then I got creative, I work on electronics and I fixed the light. So now I have a light and the new A360X, which I don't know what I'm going to do with. Fugium's not running anything fancy, it's just Kato Morpha. The plumbing is probably one of the most important things for a reef tank is preventing leaks. And also I really like hard plumbing. It gives me the ability to build it in once and tuck it away so that it's not in my way. And you can also use good valves. Uh, good valves are much more expensive than what you're going to get at Home Depot. If you're doing your drains, um, right now I have a system where it's one, there's two overflow boxes. Each overflow box has three holes. Uh, on both boxes, there's one return, which is one inch. There's one full siphon, which is one inch. And then there's also one emergency drain, which is one inch. The full siphon has a strainer on it to prevent anything from clogging it up. And I can control exactly how much water level, getting it all the way up so it's just at the edge of that emergency and almost no water is going through the emergency. But if that ever clogs, which I don't know how it will because there's a pretty good strainer that I built and put on there, it would immediately start going to the overflow. And I've already completely closed both of these valves to test to see that the emergencies could handle all of the flow of the aquarium, which they can. Uh, this is Aqua View V sterilizer that I hinted at earlier. It's an awesome sterilizer. I had a emergency, um, I bought quarantine fish from a vendor. Um, and then I bought corals from two premier coral distributors. Um, and I got it. Um, for quarantine fish, probably where they came in, because I saw other things, little growths and things attached to the uh, hippo tang. Um, I'm thinking it came in the quarantine fish. And then, um, but a lot of people put corals in their tank from worldwide and not had problems. And so it came from someplace it shouldn't have, but I got it. And trying to catch fish out of this tank is insanely hard. So I ended up uh, installing the UV filter. This is actually gonna come offline soon. Uh, I plumbed it in there nice so that it could stay forever, but I'm also planning on taking it out. Um, Another piece of the filtration that I'm using right now is the Vertex Alpha 200. Had this workhorse for quite a while and it does a great job. There's nothing fancy, there's nothing special about it. It's just a good skimmer. Um, if you wanna see a review on that, I have another video. 
I'll see if I can put that in the description below. And then you'll see this big 300 gallon, messy 300 gallon container. That's actually where I do my salt water mixing and I'll be actually plumbing in that to do my auto water change. So there's a little space on the board um, already left open for a dose, Neptune dose pump to do auto water changes out of that 300 gallon container. If you have any questions about the gear that I chose here, please leave me a question in the comments below. If you think I picked the wrong gear and you got a better idea, let me know that too. Um, always open to new ideas and I have a lot of fun designing these types of systems. I do systems for my regular job, but fish tanks are kind of a hobby and a passion. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, click the like and the subscribe button, and I hope to bring you more videos on everything fish tank related from equipment to livestock to how-tos to products reviews. Thank you and enjoy.